Okay, this is number problem number four. Consider all the lines in the x and y plane that passes through the origin and a point x, y on the graph. Uh, y is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 5, all oh, plus 9, between 1 and 4. Uh, the figure above just shows uh, one such line on the graph, and the graph is this parabola. Y is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 9, okay? Which of the following statements is true? The line with a minimum slope passes through the graph. Uh, one, two, three, four. Now, the question is, the line with a minimum slope. So remember, slope is rise over run, right? It's our rise over run. So a minimum slope would be something like, like this, right? A maximum slope may be a little higher like that. So we want something with the lowest value. Now, how do we find the slope of the line? The slope is simply found as the derivative of that line. So I'm using, trying to think about how to do this problem. And I'm thinking maybe the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. That's one way of thinking about a line. Um, where don't we share a common x and a y point? And our b value here is going to be 0. Um, and this line has to somehow hit, they can hit various points on this graph between when x is 1 and x is 4. I don't know where x is 1 is, x is 4 is. We could probably plug that in. If I plug in x is 1 here, that's 1 squared minus 4 plus 9. That's uh, 6. So maybe this is 6. If I plug in 4, that would be 16 minus 16 plus 9. And that's something maybe like here. That looks like 9. So someplace between our starting value here, 1, and our ending value 4, we're going to have the lowest, I guess, slope. And I guess it goes back up. You guys can see that? Let me draw that again. If I start off over here, let's use a, let's make this one. This would be a pretty high slope. Let's say 9 is maybe a little farther up. Let's see, 9 is a little farther up. Let's say 9 is up here a little bit. So our slope is going to be someplace that looks higher. All right, so this is high, and this is high, and we're looking for the lowest one, lowest possible slope. Let's see what we can do with this problem. Uh, y equals mx plus b, and we said b was 0. That's the equation of this line. Now, where do we get the x and y values of this line? Well, let's just resolve this real quick. So m, which is my slope, is equal to x divided by y. Now, we don't want two variables here. We want to find our, our rate of change at dm over dx or dy, in this case, let's say is dx. Right? So let's change our y to x's, and we have a y here. So we're going to rewrite our equation in terms of x. So m is equal to x over x squared minus 4x plus 9. Okay, now let me start all over to just repeat what I did here. We're looking for what it says in this statement here, the line with a minimum slope. So I said, okay, fine. The line here has a simple equation, y equals mx plus b. What well, they told us, one of the points goes to the origin. So we know our b value for sure is going to be 0. So I rewrote the equation in my brain, y is equal to mx. Now we're trying to maximize which variable here, the x, the y, or the m? The m. So we solve for the m. Because we're going to take the derivative of m. And we're going to take it with respect to x because we have a lot of x variables here. And it's going to be our uh, rise over run, right? Rise over run. So let's go ahead and if I solve for m, m is equal to we divide both sides by x, y over x. Whoops, I made a mistake back here then. Rewriting this. Sorry about that. It's going to be y over x. I'm glad I. Where you wrote that, 
and we said y was given by the parabola x squared minus 4x plus 9 over x. And we're going to go ahead and divide this. No, sorry, not divide. Take the derivative. So the derivative would be dy dm over dx, the rate change in slope, with respect to dx. And the derivative is going to be a quotient rule. And we're going to write 2x minus 4, leave the x alone, minus derivative of the bottom, which is 1, leave the top alone, x squared minus 4x plus 9 all over x squared. Uh, rewriting this, multiplying that out, it's actually going to be equals to 2x squared minus 4x minus x squared plus 4x minus 9. We have some like terms. Uh, we have a 2x here, 2x and an x, and we have our, those are going to look like they're going to get rid of each other. So I'm seeing we have x squared minus 9. That's my slope equation. And this is factorable, x plus 3, x minus 3. So x would be positive, uh, so negative 3 here, and positive 3. Now I don't know, it, remember, from uh, optimization, I don't know when it's a max or min. All I know is these are critical points. So we draw a number line, negative 3, and 3. One thing that we know, is 3 even a possibility? Nope. X can be negative 3 because we're only between 1 and 4. So even if I plug in the values, use 0, that's an easy one, and we will use 4. If I plug it into my if I plug into my integral here, sorry, my derivative, I'm sorry. If I plug in 0, we end up with a negative value. And if I plug in 4, we end up with a positive value. So the graph looks like that. Min or max. Going down, up, down, up, down, up. That looks like a minimum to me. So we have a minimum slope when x is equal to 3. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Save that in case we need it later. Next problem. This We, we did this one already, very similar to that. It's very similar to this problem already. Um... Let's do this one. The curve, consider the curve x y plane. Um, okay, some weird graph equals x for y is greater than one of y is greater than negative one, because if it was less than this would become negative, right? And what does the derivative of y with respect to x not exist? Okay, so let's go ahead. Oh, wait. For when y is greater than negative 1, does the derivative of y with respect to x not exist? For what values of y? I'm sorry, for what values of y? So we're going to find out what values of y does this not work. Okay. So they asked us to find the derivative of y with respect to x. So let's just go take the derivative of this guy here. Um, I'm going to have to use a product rule. So the derivative of y is 1. And then. Or I guess we can write it as uh, dy over dx. And then we're going to take, leave the back alone. y cubed plus 1. Uh, plus, that's a, remember, that's a 1 half exponent. That's 1 half. Um, if you guys are fast, we can write the square on the bottom. y cubed plus 1. Chain rule is going to leave us a y um, squared. 3y squared dy over dx. Okay, that's our chain rule. Let me just, uh, actually, let me write out so you guys can see it a lot better. All the steps of chain rule, okay? Sorry. Derivative of the back would be um, 1 over 2 square root uh, y cubed plus 1. That's the derivative of a square root. Chain rule will lead us to be 3x squared, sorry, 3y squared. Derivative of a y would be dy over dx, and the derivative of a 1 is just 0. Then we also don't forget to copy the front. We sometimes get excited and we forget to copy uh, back the other side. So the rule goes, derivative of the front, leave the back alone, and the derivative of the back, leave the front alone. Okay, 
and this is equal to the derivative of x, we're going to say is 1. And if you're not sure about that, if I say d uh, x over dx, that's why it's 1. Okay, okay um, we're going to try to get our dy or dx. So let's uh, factor that out. Or this guy here, if we can factor that out. So dy over dx, we're left with the square root of y cubed plus 1 plus y over 2, sorry, a couple y's here, 3y cubed. Right, that's a cubed, these guys here, that would be y cubed, over the square root of y cubed plus 1. And we already said that we already said that oh, this is equal to 1. We can divide this dy over dx is equal to 1 over this whole problem. Now, I want to rewrite this problem as a fraction. So I'm going to take one extra step here. I'm going to rewrite that as a common denominator. They both need a 2 square root of y cubed plus 1. Like when we multiply a y cubed plus 1 to the top, and the bottom, uh, we end up with on top just a 2 y cubed plus 1 uh, plus 3 y cubed all over a common 2 square root of y cubed plus 1. Okay. And then when we divide this over here, it's going to end up with a reciprocal. And we end up with a 2 square root of y cubed plus 1 on top. On the bottom, we still get a y cubed plus 1. Uh, we have some like terms here, right? Those two. So I'm seeing that would be a 5. y cubed plus 2. Because we distribute, distribute the 2. So we have two, 2 plus 3 is 5. And then the plus 2. Okay. So when does this derivative not exist? It only doesn't exist when this goes to 0. Because we already said that y is greater than 1, so the square root always exists. So let's go ahead and do the math on the side. Uh, when does 5y cubed plus 2 equals 0? Minus the 2, divide the 5, and take the radical. This will be y is equal to negative 2 over 5, and then the 1. Most of this problem was Algebra 2. Uh, the hardest part was not to get lost along the way, but really this was Algebra 2 problem.